Uh, let's move on. Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs, 11-3, 7-1 last year. Uh, returning starters, they got six coming back on offense, seven on defense. Experience, number 36 in the country. Experience returning, number four in the conference. Kirby Smart, 32-10 and 10 in three years. Uh, that is the same record as Mark Richt, I believe, right? Yeah, I, think I mean, that's right. yeah, he took over. Um, he, he didn't have to rebuild much. No. Uh, they lost both offensive coordinator Jim Chaney and defensive coordinator Mel Tucker. Uh, but this will be the most talented Georgia team that Kirby Smart has had as of yet. They've strung along three straight top three recruiting classes. That's pretty awesome. Uh, over, under is 11 this year. Over is plus 140. Under is minus 160. So Vegas thinks it's either 11 or under, one, one way or the other. Uh, this is quarterback Jake Fromm's team now. Sure. Uh, Justin Fields is gone. There's no Jacob Eason behind him. Uh, nothing like that. It is Jake Fromm's team. With the OC gone, uh, more than likely they're going to throw more. Like Jim Chaney relied so heavily on the run, and they have got a stable of running backs, right? Uh, this this year's core will look the same, like as, as a Georgia team normally does. Uh, even with losing their top three wide receivers and their top tight end, they're still probably going to throw more because Jake Fromm is a good quarterback. He's really, really good. I think they lost their best running back, but they. Yeah. Never, I don't know why Kirby never gave him the ball. But well, running back DeAndre Swift, he's going to put up some massive numbers oh, this no, year. And Swift um, was the the got he, way the more playmaker. touches. He was the yeah. playmaker that the. They started um, and, and rode more than more than ever. Defense was number 13 in total defense, number 14 in scoring last year, which looking at this team, you would have thought they would have been higher in both of those. But either way, the defensive line needs to improve. They were number 31 in the country against the run last year. Not great, but it, they, they did slow down the teams that they needed to. I mean, Kentucky got nothing on the ground against them, but maybe that's easy to do. When you're not afraid of the pass. Right, but LSU, however, ran and LSU didn't have to be over. afraid of the pass and... Yeah, I mean, well, LSU he, destroyed them. Uh, the secondary looked look vulnerable bad. without DeAndre Baker in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, that's a concern, so you need them to be able to step up this year. Uh, out of their, they're they're one of the three top most talented teams in college football. The Bama hurdle is big, but the expectations at this point for Kirby Smart are national title or bust. Oh, now, I don't yeah. know. I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, I mean, this is still a first time head coach, and yes, he is in year four. But, you know, I, how realistic is it to expect, well, if, if you don't win a national championship, it's a bum season. Like, that's, that's where we're at with this team now. I don't know that I agree with that. Okay. I, I said, yeah, earlier, but, but that's because that's the expectation. You've made it to the SC Championship every year. You've made it to the National Championship already. You're they haven't one, won a national championship you're, you're since You're a complete collapse away from making it to back-to-back national championships or, or playoffs and – winning the national title. So I think that's the expectation. I think that's the goal. I think they're at that level. But I don't know that it's a failure season if you don't get that. Yeah. But I see college football very differently. I don't think there are a lot of undefeated teams, even though it happens more often than I would rather think. I I just think somewhere along the lines, these are still 18, 19-year-old kids. They – yeah. You know, have bad days. They have bad games. They're more volatile emotionally, or the way they handle um, different things could be completely wrong with that. You are, and, and you, they're the gonna odds, find, and they're gonna find places to fall. The odds of you winning all of them or losing one, uh, losing one game, even one big game, are much more likely than you winning all of them. That's right. Like that's just the way that this goes. That's right. So. Uh, look, I've got Georgia at 11 and 1, 7 and 1 in the conference. I've got them losing to Florida. Would it surprise me if they beat Florida and they run the table? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they were to lose to Notre Dame. It wouldn't surprise me if they lose like at Tennessee or to Missouri or at Auburn or, you know, Texas A&M late in the year. Like it, uh, there's all sorts of spots that could be landmines that you don't expect. Uh, but what we've seen from Kirby Smart in the last two years is when they've got that really difficult road game. That is when it's difficult, right? Like, that's yes. that's when his team he sometimes... Is, he has not traveled well when it's against a big boy school. Well, it's, it's so against Alabama, he kind of panicked in a pressure situation and did a fake punt on 4th and 11. Well, 
they ran a fake field goal early against LSU, and things kind of uh, rolled downhill from there. That's right. Right? And it was the same thing at Auburn back two years ago. Like That's the right. year that they made it to the national championship game, they're playing at Auburn. It's a close game. They're down, but he tries to come up with something. Like it, they, it, But they lose, like, they lose focus. It was close early. Yeah, it was close early, and All, then and then it just say, snowballed. Over killed him. Um, but but it was it was still close, even you know in the thir- midway through the third quarter. Score was, but they were they were. I mean, LSU yeah. game was the close score wise, but LSU dominated every aspect of the game. Yeah, and and they so they lose focus when they start to get punched in the mouth, right? And the question is, which one of these teams can punch them in the mouth? And I don't know off the top of my head yet. Like, A&M is capable. I think they've got four games Auburn that, is can capable. Do, that can happen at. Florida is capable. Notre Dame is capable. At Tennessee? We don't maybe? know, but Tennessee's capable. Like, yeah. it wouldn't surprise you if Tennessee came out. This would be Tennessee's first, like, real crazy test, I guess, coming off of Florida. They got a bye week. They could easily... And, and Georgia's got a bye week. Does Tennessee have a bye week? Yep. Right? Yeah. Tennessee's, Tennessee's got the got... bye week, too. And, and Tennessee just hired their offensive coordinator. Yeah. So, like, he's going to know a few tricks of the trade with this team and what they're good at, what they're not. Uh, I, I've got Georgia 11-1. and one. I've got them in the SEC championship game again. Like, I mean, I've got them in the SEC championship game again. i got them 10-2 and two yeah. because I, I don't think they're a flawless team. I think they have flaws. I think Kirby absolutely has flaws. I think when things get high-pressured, like you said, when he feels just a little bit of heat. Now, he's a great front-running coach. If they get out early on you, absolutely. That that beast gets loose, you're not getting him back in the barn. Okay, but if you get a little bit of pressure on him, I think he folds and he folds fast. That LSU mistake, that LSU mistake, I, he felt pressure in that game in the first quarter. Yeah, and he just collapsed. Now the the Alabama and LSU game could not throw the football. The Alabama we game tried. last year, he didn't feel pressure until late in the game. That's right. And but as soon as he feels it, he falls. To pieces. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen a coach, and he did the same thing in the national championship game. I've never seen a coach have be in such control, and then it's like a switch goes off, and as soon as he panics, he loses all sense of what his team is, what got him there. And I don't understand how there's not another coach on the sideline that can't say, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just let's just call a timeout for a minute. Well, and and let's let's figure out maybe that'll be how fixed. did we get here? But hang yeah. on, you think that's going to be fixed? Well, but I mean, they, why would it be fixed? They have a new offensive coordinator. They got a new defensive coordinator, right? Um, now it's possible that Georgia wanted Cheney to leave, right? Maybe. And that's because if Georgia wanted to outbid Tennessee, oh no, they, like, they would have. That's right. Um, and, but maybe and, Cheney didn't want to be there. It's possible for that. There's all I mean, sorts of different reasons. If I'm why the OC jump, and right? I put up the points that I put up against Auburn. I watch how LSU played. Now, I don't know whose decision it was to stop running Elijah Holyfield when he touched the ball eight times and he averaged eight yards per carry, and that's not one yard for 80 yards, it, one, one carry for no, 80 it yards. Was, it was every time he touched the ball, he got eight yards, and he only touches it eight times. I don't know whose decision that is. I know this. LSU couldn't stop him, and I was terrified when he touched on the field. And they kept putting Swift in, and Swift got nothing. But Swift was hurt, too. It, like it's but, I think we had a lot to do with that. Yeah, but even still, like that's that's the thing, right? Like you you got to know your personnel. You so gotta I don't I don't do. know who made those decisions, but if if he was hamstrung as an OC and being told to call certain things and put other you know personnel in the field, then yeah, if I'm that OC, you've collapsed twice against the team to put us in the playoffs or to win as a national championship. I don't want to be a part of this program anymore. Yeah, we won't win as many games. But the pressure to win is too high, and you as a coach can't do it. Then, then you could see Cheney leaving because of that. Yeah. Now, if that was all Cheney's decision, then I could absolutely see Georgia saying, "This guy's got to go. This cat averaged eight yards a touch every time he touched it, and, and we kept pulling the ball. him. Yeah. For a guy who's hurt. So anyway, I got him ten and two. Um, I don't know what two games they're going to lose, but Florida's not going to be easy. At Auburn's not gonna be easy. I think A and M's one of the best teams in the country that has just a hellacious schedule. We'll get to that in the next next show. But it's just one of those situations where I would be more shocked if they ran the table than if they finished nine and three. A and M. And I know I know that's a 
Big, big difference. A&M plays South Carolina at home the week before they play at Georgia. Um, but you could totally see where Georgia... But Georgia's at Auburn. Yeah, Georgia leaves everything on the table at Auburn to get a win, and then they they cough up the next week. Like now, body, body at blow Aub- theory. If that at Auburn game ends up being the ass thrashing that it was a couple of years back, and yeah. they just can't win, they lose that one big road game. Then they, they could easily... Then I could see them trucking A&M. A&M. Because yeah. they're going to be a different team. This is just how this stuff always works out. Kids play high, and then they play low. It's why they're kids. It's why they're not yeah. professionals. Or they um, play low, and then they and then they play, they high. play high. That's right. So, so it's all emotion. It's ten and two is nothing to sneeze at. I still got them winning the conference. I still got them playing in the SEC title game. Um, I, I don't know that that you is a failure season. Well, oh, wait, the, the you division. The I'm division. so sorry. Okay. Winning the division, playing in the SEC title game.